Hi hey guys, welcome to our daily encounter. Have you ever worked on something really, really hard only to find that it didn't work out the way that you had intended? Maybe it was uh, some type of project you were working on at the house that kind of fell apart. Maybe it was uh, some type of gardening that you did and really nothing came out of it. Uh, maybe nothing sprouted or if it did, it didn't really produce anything. Uh, maybe it was in your education. Maybe you worked really hard, put a lot of time, a lot of money into your education, only to find that it didn't really uh, put you in the career that you had originally intended to get into. It's always disappointing when you work really hard at something and you don't really get a whole lot out of it. And it almost feels like a, a waste of time and a waste of energy and sometimes a waste of money. This seems to be what's being alluded to in Isaiah chapter 5, in connection to God and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and Judah. The Lord had put a lot of work into them uh, to make sure that they were set up for success, only to find that he didn't really get a whole lot out of the work that he put in. Uh, this is what it says. This is Isaiah chapter 5, starting in verse 1. It says, Let me sing now for my well-beloved, a song for my beloved concerning his vineyard. My well-beloved had a vineyard on a fertile hill. He dug it all around, removed its stones, and planted it with the choicest vine. And he built a tower in the middle of it, and also hewed out a wine vat in it. Then he expected it to produce good grapes, but it produced only worthless ones. So uh, here uh, God is being pictured as uh, this husbandman, uh, this person who has this vineyard, and he puts all this work into it. Uh, it says that he dug it all around. Uh, he took out all the stones. You can think about how hard of work that would have been, just removing all the stones from the soil. Uh, planted a, this, the best vine perhaps he could find. Uh, put a tower there uh, to protect it and to overlook it. And then put a wine vat in it. Everything was set up. Everything was there to set this vineyard up for success only to find that it produced only worthless grapes and didn't give him the good grapes that it should have produced based on how much time, effort uh, that was put in. And, and that's how it was with God and his people. He had put a lot of work into them over a lengthy period of time. You know, uh, saved them out of Egyptian bondage uh, in a very miraculous way, brought them through the Red Sea, cared for them, took care of them during the wilderness wanderings, uh, spoke to them at Sinai, uh, even led them into the promised land where they had this great victory over their enemies through Joshua, uh, set them up in a land that was beautiful, a land that was uh, very productive, uh, gave them his law, gave them everything that they needed to set them up for success, only to find that they didn't produce the fruit that he was looking for. Uh, they only produce worthless grapes. They were only living for themselves as you look at the context. And they weren't really living the life that would bring glory to the God who had set them up for success, basically. As we think about this as, as believers, as Christians, even looking at it from the New Testament perspective, we can see that God has set us up for success as well. God has done a lot for us to get us where we are, to put us in the position that we are in today. Um, not just hard work, but he actually sent his own son to die for us on the cross. He sent his own son to die on the cross so that we could be forgiven, so that we could have a position before God, so that we could be his people, so that we could be a part of this new covenant that he had uh, ordained with the blood of Christ. I sent his own son to die for us and then also caused his son to be risen again uh, as a picture for us, as, an, as a, a promise of new creation and new life that he can provide to us. And, and then after Christ ascended into heaven, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit uh, onto his people and then in the giving of uh, the word to uh, confirm the things that he has done and, and all the work that he's done just not just uh, generally through what he did at, uh, in connection to Christ, 
2,000 years ago, but personally in our lives, the way that God has worked in our lives and pointed us in certain directions to get us in the right, uh, going down the right road, and God has worked in our lives tremendously. And the question is, is he getting anything out of the work that he's done for us? Or are we just enjoying the fact that God had done so much for us and then kind of just sitting back and just relishing uh, the good things that God has done, the blessings that he's given us, but not really rolling up our sleeves and saying, Lord, you've done so much for me. Now I want to return the favor and I want to get busy about doing the work of the kingdom. I want to be busy about bringing glory to your name. I want to be busy about producing the fruit that you intended for me to produce. Now, John chapter 15, of course, is a good parallel passage for this. Uh, in that Christ is uh, spoken of as the vine, and we are the branches. And Christ, uh, God is God the Father is the husbandman, and he's expecting us to produce fruit. Uh, and the way that we produce the fruit is by staying in communion and union with Christ and uh, living a life devoted and committed to him and upheld by him. And that's what the Lord is looking for. That's what the Father is looking for. And the question is, is he getting anything out of the work that he's put into us? And not only the work, but the love that he's put into us, the care that he's put into us, and the way that he's provided for us in so many different ways. And so we ought to be encouraged by Isaiah chapter 5 to say, you know what? I want the Lord to be glorified in my life. I want to produce fruit for the Lord. I want to do work for the kingdom because God has done so much for me. And I want to return that favor. And hopefully Isaiah chapter 5 will encourage us in that and point us in that direction. So these are some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.